As I say, this spread far beyond. Uh, the idea of blacks holding power was so outrageous, uh, it spread far beyond uh, uh, the, the, you know, this academic discourse. I was reading a, a, a biography of Alan Dulles. Alan Dulles, later the head of the CIA after World War II, a diplomat in Germany when Hitler came to power. What does this have to do with Reconstruction? Well, he went to see Hitler in 1933. And he was to, they were to, Hitler started complaining about Germany's plight under the Treaty of Versailles that, uh, that ended um, the First World War and imposed all these penalties and financial burdens on Germany. And um, Hitler said to Davis, uh, 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 to Alan Dull uh, Dulles, um, um, how would you feel if the, if after the, how would Americans have felt after the Civil War if the North had made the southern states sign a treaty keeping them in subjugation? Okay. Um, well, without fear of exaggeration, Dulles replied, in fact, the way the North treated the South after the Civil War was far worse than anything France had done to Germany. The North even installed former slaves as judges. Hitler was astonished. Black judges? He admitted the South was treated worse than Germany. In other words, the notion that black people could hold some kind of office like that was a point of unity, that as a horrible thing, was a point of unity between Hitler and the distinguished American diplomat there. They both agreed that that was about as bad as a situation could get. Now, one might think, unfortunately, scholarship, which has rejected all this, doesn't always percolate out to the whole um, society. So one more thing. Here's a letter to the editor of the Worcester, Massachusetts, not Mississippi, Massachusetts Telegram a few years ago, where someone had, there had been an article about the Ku Klux Klan, and so a resident of Worcester writes in, this was sent to me by a friend from up there, um, yes, he says, your, your article talks about the Ku Klux Klan as a terrorist group, but it fails to mention why it was founded in, in, in Reconstruction. The film Birth of a Nation is a vivid account of this period. It was first shown to President Wilson in the White House. Judge for yourselves who were the terrorists. God bless the Ku Klux Klan. This is 2004, and the evidence is Birth of a Nation from 1915. So you see how this kind of resonates out and helps to shape uh, public consciousness long, long afterwards. Um, all right, anyway, one could go on and on with this, but one of the key points here is, as I said, the politics of history. This view of history had powerful political implications in the United States, which is one of the reasons it lasted so long. That is to say, it, it comported, it overlapped with the actual racial situation in the United States in the first half of the 20th century, what we call the Jim Crow system, which we'll talk about down the road. I think that explains its remarkable staying power. It had a clear set of heroes and villains, very easy to understand, but basically, it taught a clear political lesson. One, Reconstruction re originated with the North, and therefore the White South should resist outside pressure for a change in race relations. In other words, white Southerners understand race much better than outside, even if Thaddeus Stevens might have had good motivations. Maybe he was genuinely a humanitarian. His policies created a disaster, and the South, this was part of the defense of the Jim Crow South. Secondly, um, Reconstruction was the work of the Republican Party. Now, Bowers, was, who wrote his book, The Tragic Era, 1929, was a Republican newspaper editor, a Democrat, sorry, Democratic newspaper editor in Indiana. He wrote that book because in 1928, Herbert Hoover, for the Republican candidate, had been the first Republican candidate to carry some southern states since Reconstruction. Because he was running against Al Smith as the Democrat, a Roman Catholic, and some southern whites didn't want to vote for a Roman Catholic at that point. This was very frightening to Democrats, losing their, so what was the argument? Look at what will happen if the Republicans get back into power. Another Reconstruction. The South must stay united, the solid, united, democratic South. Otherwise, there was going to be another Reconstruction. 
And finally, of course, the alleged horrors of Reconstruction legitimated the disenfranchisement of black voters. Look what happened when they got the right to vote. If you give them the vote again, you'll have another Reconstruction. It legitimated the whole order of segregation. It legitimated Northern indifference to the nullification of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments in the South, because this view was accepted in the North just as fully as in the South. So it, this, historians provided the intellectual underpinning, the intellectual justification for the race system of the South. And, it, was, and it, it would only collapse, this view of Reconstruction, when the Jim Crow system collapsed. Now, there, of course, there, have, there were critics of this view of Reconstruction, starting from the period itself in the 1920s, 30s. Howard K. Beale, a great historian, uh, actually influenced by the Beardian view, um, challenged, the, it, it basically uh, said, you know, the race issue really isn't what's really important here. We shouldn't focus on that. It's the economic changes. You know, the, the, he goes back to the Beardian view that you're talking about the North uh, imposing a kind of capitalist modernity upon the South. That's really what's going on. That wasn't a defense of Reconstruction, but at least he argued, let's get away from this whole question of black uh, supremacy and, and to see what's really going on. Uh, but he didn't challenge the characterization of radical Reconstruction as a tragic era. It was W.E.B. Du Bois, the great black activist, scholar, poet, novelist, founder of the NAACP, et cetera, who launched the fullest challenge in the mid-1930s in a great book, Black Reconstruction in America, which offered a far more sympathetic view of Reconstruction and its accomplishments. We will talk about it down the road and also offered a massive indictment of the historical profession, an irrefutable, an irrefutable indictment of the historical profession in this country for sacrificing scholarship on the altar of racism. One fact and one alone, wrote Du Bois at the end of that book, explains the attitude of most historians of Reconstruction. They cannot conceive of Negroes as men. They just can't accept blacks as part of American life. But the book was, it had a big impact in the black world, in colleges, in black magazines, but in the mainstream colleges and universities, it was ignored. And indeed, to this day, how many years later, 80 years later, 75 years later, um, Black Reconstruction, one of the greatest works of American scholarship, has never been reviewed in the American Historical Review, the premier journal, scholarly journal of American history, a sign of how it was ignored for so long. 